This is a journey in time to an ancient African kingdom. Legends of the Queen of Sheba, stories of the lost holy ark, ancient churches and mosques carved in stone. All these await a traveler along with the warm, hearty Ethiopian hospitality. Alba Minch, Amharic for 40 Springs, is a city in southern Ethiopia. It is located 500 kilometers south of Addis Ababa at an elevation of 1200 meters above sea level. I reached the town just in time for the Sunday Mass. One of the things which distinguish Ethiopia is the central role that spirituality and religion play in the people's lives. I was mesmerized by the white-wearing people standing and listening to the prayers of the priest. There was something very special about the atmosphere in the church's garden. Each person, standing in silence, near a tree or in some other corner, so focused and attentive. This reminded me of a meditation, an Eastern tradition, the search for an inner God. Ethiopian Christianity contains many features which resemble Judaism. One of the most significant things is the separation between men and women. It is a well-known fact that Ethiopian women are beautiful. In Greek mythology, there is a myth about the princess Andromeda daughter of Cepheus and Cassiopeia, the Ethiopian kings. According to the story, one day Queen Cassiopeia boasted that she was more beautiful than the daughters of Poseidon, the god of the sea. To punish the queen for her arrogance, Poseidon, brother to Zeus and god of the sea, sent a sea monster named Cetus to ravage the coast of Ethiopia, including the kingdom of the vain queen. The desperate king consulted the oracle of Apollo, who announced that no respite would be found until the king sacrificed his virgin daughter Andromeda to the monster. She was chained to a rock on the coast, awaiting her doom. Just then, Perseus, the son of Zeus, saw her bound, fell in love with her, and promised to kill the monster if only the king would give him her hand in marriage. Perseus turned the monster into stone, using Medusa's head, and carried on to free and marry Andromeda. A local man told me that in Alba Minch, the more religious a girl is, the more honorable she is considered to be, and becoming a nun is actually a very common childhood dream of many Ethiopian women. During the Mass, the monks come out with the case in which lies a copy of the New Testament, wrapped in pretty fabric. Mm -hmm. 
the worshippers kiss the case as a symbol of honor and devoutness. ceremony, I noticed the practice of kneeling down, sometimes touching the ground with the tip of the worshipper's head. This reminded me of Islam. The mixture between so many different religious traditions intrigued and fascinated me. At the end of the Mass, the worshippers gathered all around the priest to receive his blessing. the mystical dimension continue to accompany me throughout the day. After Mass, I went to drink coffee in a small cafe. Drinking coffee in Ethiopia is very special. It is accompanied by a ceremony which takes place three times a day. At home, the woman roasts the coffee beans, and then all the guests bless her and drink the coffee in small glasses. Every guest drinks three glasses.
After the coffee ceremony, I took a walk through the town. The city was bustling and back in business. Seeing the streets full of people and animals filled me with energy. Ethiopia, and southern Ethiopia in particular, is not used to tourism and therefore many people will stop and stare at you or at your camera. Ethiopia's nickname for the white man is Frenchy, originating from the time when many French tourists came to the country. I kept walking through the peaceful town, and to my surprise, I found a small mill where teff, the local grain, is turned into flour. This flour is used to prepare injera, the national dish of Ethiopia. The next morning, I started out again on the way to northern Ethiopia. I looked for a truck I could hop on, this being the most common mean of transport for a traveler here. The weather was fine. and I was ready for a new adventure. Mm-hmm.